Awesome. Hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Hi. I'm Georgie, I'm from Procreate, and today I'd like to introduce you to the amazing Rafael Lacoste. Thank you. He's going to be doing a talk today, and about halfway through the session, we'd like to open it up to Q&A as well. So if you've got any questions for Raf, feel free to put your hand up. He'll yeah. point you out, ask you a question. All good? Okay, cool. enjoy, guys. Hi. It's really cool to be here. Thanks for the invitation uh, to extend the summer. You know, I'm from Montreal, so uh, thanks to be here. Uh, actually, it's going to be a talk about uh, my path, um, how you know, I have this challenge when I'm, when I'm creating worlds with the team, uh, how do I find inspiration to bring to life uh, a world in a game, but also in a personal project. And I'll be going also through uh, my process of creation in Procreate, so you might be interested to know a few tips of uh, uh, my way of working with Procreate. Uh, I think it's, it's really cool because uh, I've been working a lot of years uh, with uh, very heavy softwares. Uh, I started with the, back in the days, 1999, with Softimage 3D. I don't know if a few of you uh, know this software, it's a dinosaur now, but uh, it's, uh, it was like a, a pretty strong software, but it's also very heavy to, to, to use. And, uh, then I switched to 3D Studio Max to do uh, mainly backgrounds for games and also matte paintings. I've been working in the painting industry for a couple of years and I came back to video games because I found it was more creative, more interesting as an artist. Uh, so how do you find inspiration? I think uh, like uh, people would say like it's a divine gift, uh, it's uh, just a gift. I think it's more a question of uh, work and curiosity, uh, spending time outside. Uh, it's also you, who you are, where you're coming from, uh, what is your experience, uh, who you have met also because you can meet people who give you a lot of inspiration uh, through your career but also through your personal life. Um, so yeah, my name is Raphael Akos, I'm coming from France. Uh, I've been living in Montreal since uh, 2002, so yeah, 18 years in Montreal. Now I'm Canadian, so it's cool. I could escape from France. They have beautiful, uh, actually amazing schools in France, uh, a very nice uh, historical background, very nice uh, also uh, background for um, our teaching, but not that many interesting opportunities for work. So that's uh, the reason why a lot of French people escape to Canada and US. You will get the explanation. Um, I've been raised in, in Paris, but also in uh, Algeria, in the south of uh, Algeria, so that's uh, North Africa. So the cheeky baby, that's me. Um, so just uh, showing this photo because uh, I've been spending a long time in uh, this kind of landscape. So there's, a, you know, open landscapes. And I think even if I was, I was like really, really young, uh, I, I've been watching the pictures uh, that my, you know, my father was taking when, when we were here. Uh, so all the work my father was doing when he was taking this picture, but also all the time I spent here was a kind of an inspiration already. So maybe that's not completely disconnected with uh, my passion for, you know, Arabian, you know, architecture, uh, uh, landscape and you know eventually why I worked on Prince of Persia. You know there's a connection through the, the life you have, uh, the inspiration you get through life and how you, 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 you get uh, to, to do what you, what you like to do. So these are photos from the place uh, where I was living when I was two years old. Uh, so it's pretty uh, inspiring, pretty beautiful. Um, so from like the early age, uh, I remember I've been always drawing uh, since uh, I was a kid. Um, you can see the beautiful sketch I was doing when I was young, like maybe five years old. He says, okay, it's going to be delicious. I was very, oh, that's spooky. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, like some, you know, little stories like this. I was five years old, um, even writing some stuff. No, yeah, I'm not writing anymore, um, but um, I've been taking a lot of photos um, when, I, when I was a teenager and then when I went to the fine arts in Bordeaux school. So it was for me a good experience to learn how to deal with composition, with lighting, uh, with also atmosphere, atmospheric depth. And this is for me like a, a real experience when you take a photo, when you spend some time in a place um, and, and you get really immersed by the lighting and you, you, you deal with the composition, you, you, you try to, to just focus on details. Sometimes it's, it's like when you frame something, it's like recreating a position in an actual exist existing landscape. So that's why I, I like, uh, even when I'm doing the illustration, uh, if the image is extending like on a, on a large scale to, to you know, do this kind of sacrifice when you can really crop inside the composition to choose what is really interesting. And also it gives the feeling that the actual image 
is a world existing beyond the frame. So that I can see that very often, that this kind of mistake with my, my students when I was teaching, uh, people tend to really fill you know, the full frame and to like, even like fill the corners of the, of the frame, which is like a mistake, I think. So when you try to crop inside your illustration, you, know, you, you get rid of maybe 20% of the image, uh, you get this feeling that the image is actually existing beyond the frame, and that's, that's pretty interesting. Uh, when I was 20, um, I was in the fine arts and I was also working for a theater company. So that was for me a very good experience because I, I got to work with people. It was a very human experience and also very rich because I know how to deal with the lighting, uh, you know, actually moving spots, moving lightings, uh, working with models, working with the uh, actors. So that was like my, my first experience of, you know, being involved in a team before, you know, making a uh, game. Uh, so now, you know, you know, we are all, uh, for all people working in the film industry and the game industry, we, we spend a long time sitting on, on, you know, in front of a computer. And I felt this experience, uh, like working in theater was great because we were actually like moving physical things and it's really um, a very interesting human experience. So it's not steady, it's, a, it's more like a question of uh, a strong human experience. But, you know, I was not uh, making, making any money through uh, this beautiful uh, uh, moment in my life. It was. Very human, very interesting, but you, when you don't make you know, a living through your art, you need to think to different options. And that's why I tried to go to a few art schools in France. So there's a few you can know, maybe the National Art Decorative uh, of Paris. Uh, Femis is a film school in Paris, but this school are like really, really hard. It's public school, but it's also really difficult to get uh, in this school because you have like maybe three to four thousand people trying to get like, yeah, yeah, 25 people trying to get to a place where you can have like, like only 20 seats or like 30 seats. Which, so it's a, it's a big, uh, big challenge. And I didn't know how to present my portfolio. So eventually what happened was I was rejected for all these contests. So I need to find a new solution. <laughs> and I went to a school uh, that was directed by uh, a French animation master, uh, René Lalou, who did The Time Masters. I don't know if some of you guys have seen this movie. Uh, Ganda, uh, the Fantastic Planet, so very old animation movie from from Europe, and that was a great experience. Um, also, this guy was working with uh, Jean Giraud, another French dude, uh, Moebius. Uh, so being able to to be close to these guys was for me like a huge inspiration, and I learned a lot um, with these guys on on the side of you know storytelling, uh, directing, working animation, but also visual composition, lighting. So that was for me. Uh, very, very cool experience and super enriching. Have you guys seen this movie, Time Masters? Yeah, it's, 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 the animation is not incredible, but the, the, the overall like, storytelling and all these uh, worlds are really, really amazing, really super interesting. So, you know, during this year at the school, I did this animation movie, Neon, that was screened at Seagraph uh, 2000, that's a long time ago. Um, but uh, it gave me the opportunity to be uh, visible and uh, to, uh, to eventually work for the, the game industry. And then it was like really my, my ramp up to, 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 to be eventually directing, working on games like Prince of Persia, Assassin's Creed, working as a director. Um, I've been like really, really busy on the, all these games, but um, on the side, uh, it was really important for me to take the time to do some personal stuff, also to renew inspiration, but also to get back in touch, to get your hands dirty and do like your personal stuff. And I think it's super important if you, even if you are like super busy at work and also if you have a family, you're busy with the kids like uh, I am. I wanted to also have time for myself and spending time on personal stuff. So that's why I did in 2016 this book uh, Worlds and it was my first personal, you know, uh, actual project I did out of uh, Ubisoft. And more, more recently I did uh, this book of uh, line arts, drawing lines. I have a few copies here. Um, but it's, I think it's really important to be able to, to step back from, from work and do what you really like also and spend time on, you know, having this uh, connection with the paper, with the traditional uh, way of doing things and spending too much time in meetings and uh, uh, with complex tools like uh, 3D softwares and lighting engine and stuff. Uh, so, question of inspiration, uh, even for, for games. Um, my experience is to, to spend some time when I'm traveling, uh, taking photos and sketching to try to understand how things are working. Um, how do we make an interesting composition based on, on an ancient castle, for instance, 
uh, uh, if I'm in the forest, what is interesting in the shape of the roots, what is interesting in terms of shape of the forest, the density, the atmosphere you can find here. Uh, when I'm walking in a village uh, in the south of France, I'm trying to get why is it pretty, what is it beautiful, or because maybe that's the sloping streets, uh, uh, the crooked houses. So I'm trying to, to learn and to, 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 to observe a lot and find inspiration in what I see. Uh, if you can't travel, if you don't have the time or the money to travel, I think just going outside, spending time, time you know, in, in your city, uh, going in, in the alleys, taking photos, um, looking, you know, being really open to, to observation is important, to just understand how things are connected, how things are working, and how you can tell a story through, uh, through a line art, for instance. Um, on, on the left here, you have something that is uh, in Sao Paulo, so I could be inspired by, you know, modern cities, crazy buildings, and more, you know, ancient buildings like Venice on the top uh, left. Um, also trying to understand how connection between the trees, the leaves is working, that's uh, something that is uh, pretty difficult when you when you don't you know spend time drawing vegetation trees and organic uh, composition so i think it's really a question of practicing and um, taking photos uh, being organized also when you're creating your your personal uh, data bank of the base of uh, reference and and taking time to to observe and, and practice a lot it's always a question of you know practicing you want to be better uh, it's there's no you know no, no uh, Mistake. Well, it's really about like spending time drawing, spending time uh, observing, and taking photos. So what I would do is, uh, you can see here, I would take photos uh, when I'm traveling. <coughs> Sorry, and uh, I'm creating an album with all these references. So I would share to myself uh, NightCloud uh, library, and every time I, I find something interesting, it could be like outside when I, I was walking to the party yesterday. There was this big dome with the, the palm trees in the front. I took a photo, I can save that in this uh, library. And every time I need to, to create something or to get some reference, I would open, uh, it could be the iPad or the, the, the MacBook, and I would you know, check this library and maybe take from there some inspiration for surfaces, for uh, compositions, but also even color palette and mood. That's pretty important. And you will see later, even like when I'm doing uh, some illustration in Procreate, uh, I'm not doing any color picking. I'm always watching my photos as inspiration because it's very hard to be able to uh, study on the blank page. And if you do something that is still moody and a bit realistic in terms of color pattern mood, uh, starting with you know with the right values for you know the grass or the sky, you, you can't really know what is the exact blue here and what would be the, the, the values of the grass. You know, in a 6 a.m. You know. Sunlight, so it's it's pretty difficult to uh, to to work like really uh, out of the blue. So that's why I, I'm I'm working a lot with uh, my own photos, and I think taking your own photos is also not only a question of copyright, but it's also part of the process you should have. You know, if you want to make a painting, you want to be inspired by by the color palette, by the mood. Um, taking the photo is also already part of the process of your own creation. Uh, this was taken in, in Iceland um, a few years ago. Um, I was really amazed by the light uh, uh, of this uh, country, but also the shape of uh, you know, the landscape, the hills, the mountains. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, so that was like a huge inspiration you know, uh, source for me. And eventually, what I would do is I would take a photo I really like, not only um, because of uh, the elements you see in the photo, but because of the mood and the color palette. Uh, getting inspiration, getting your, your own bank of mood, color palette is really interesting when you want to bring to life uh, a plausible world. Even if you're designing everything you're creating from scratch, um, like, like a fantastical landscape, could be organic, could be structural, could be man-made. Um, having a mood, having some reference for the mood is really important. And that's why, for instance, in that case, uh, I wanted to, to start with this kind of, you know, in between hours um, before the night. So you can see, you know, there's a point of artificial light, but also you can get all this interesting, you know, shading in, in the mountains, in, in the details you can see in the shade. So that's, that's, for me, a very cool inspiration. And I took this image as inspiration to create this image. So you can see there's no real connection between you know, the two different composition. But the actual blue, the, the color of the mist, uh, the way I created the, also the ground, the contrast between all these artificial lights, 
uh, or these fires and the mood behind is really taken from the expression of the photo uh, I took before. Is it clear? Yes. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that, that's not uh, Ubisoft work uh, at all. That's just personal stuff I've been doing uh, over the past like uh, 15 years. Uh, I, I really wanted to work on more fantastical landscape because working as art director on AC games, uh, we tend to have this kind of historical context and uh, also very grounded. <clears throat> which is interesting because you, you learn a lot when you bring to life a city. Uh, and I think it's super interesting when you create a city like uh, Memphis uh, in, in um, Egypt or even Alexandria because you bring to life a city that is not here anymore. So you have to be creative, you have to recreate something even without any reference. So that's, that's really a super interesting creative process, but you don't, you don't have a fantastical setting. So that's why I'm doing more fantastical stuff on my side, on my personal you know, time. Um, so you can see all these pictures are in my, the first book I did. Uh, so I'm exploring different topics. Uh, this one uh, was my first attempt to work with a 100% opacity brush, so I don't have any opacity on the brush, so it's like a, the, you, know, you, you get the color directly 100% when you, when you hit the, the tablet, so that's a good exercise. Uh, it's also inspired by uh, Scotland. The, this is the old man of store in, um, in Scotland. So again, like you know, some trips, some travels could really give you inspiration on creating new stuff and getting new, new ideas for your design. Yeah, so I'm exploring a lot of different techniques. Sometimes that would be uh, 3D base, uh, working also with uh, some uh, 3D assets, doing some first pass of lighting. Uh, then taking a lot of photos, using these photos as you know, textures and materials to bring to life something that is uh, almost uh, credible in terms of scale. Um, and also interesting because you, you get this uh, like realistic atmospheric depth. Um, I've been also doing some matte painting for the film industry using the same technique. Uh, in that case, that's uh, for Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, I did that to show like a, an artistic vision of what could be the center of the earth. So that was a, a big challenge because I had uh, four weeks working in just one single image. That's why eventually I, I left uh, the film industry because I, I thought spending too much time in one single image is, is, um, is not creative enough. I think it's cool because you can really give a very clear direction to the team, to the matte painters, to the visual effect artists, but it's also taking a lot of time on your creative process because you you, you spend a long time detailing things, uh, getting feedback, and really telling uh, like the scale and adding you know light light details and also scale reference. Um, so it was a good experience, but uh, I still feel like spending that much time on one image is is way too much. But that was for a, a contract, so I can't really uh, complain. And in that case, that was the early stage of uh, journey to the center of the no, that's uh, Jupiter ascending. Sorry from the Wachowski brothers and sisters. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a cool experience because uh, I, I used a lot of different techniques from Mandelbaber to 3D Studio Max, Photoshop. Um, they wanted me to, to create this kind of uh, fractal architecture uh, castle using also some Gothic influence, Gaudi influence as well. And it had to go you know, through the clouds over the sky showing uh, uh, the, the palace of the, the bad guys of the, of the movie. So it was still a very interesting experience, a very interesting exploration. So it was really changing from the other uh, opportunities I had. Um, different technique I've been using also uh, is uh, using, taking a photo and using the photo as just inspiration for the silhouette of uh, the horizon line. And from the horizon, creating all the foreground elements. So it's also interesting because you get the sense of uh, depth, atmosphere, um, an inspiration for the background, how the sky could be blending with actual the structures you have in the foreground. And it's, it's really cool because you, as you're making the image, you're getting inspired to create the elements, you know, uh, connecting to, to, to the foreground and to the camera. So um, that's a different way of working. But uh, it's not like starting from the blank page. I would have my inspiration coming from the horizon, from the sky, and I would build you know, from there uh, the, the, uh, the composition. I have also an example from uh, Jupiter Ascending uh, that was also for the 
early conception of the, of the movie. They, you know, they wanted to have like really something very rich, very detailed, uh, using a lot of fractal elements. Um, but this was not my favorite version. I, I did the version that is very like minimalist, very simple. I'll be showing you uh, that after. But you see, like again here, using a lot of different techniques from uh, uh, 3D assets, using the lighting for the refraction on on the glass. Here you can see uh, reflection. So it's a, it's a big mess, I would say, in terms of process, using some 3D elements, some photos, uh, painting over, redoing some stuff while painting, uh, scanning some, uh, some sketches. Uh, so that's why I don't have a unique process. I, I have a process when I'm using uh, Procreate, for instance, because I want to stick to very simple tools. I just want to step back from this very heavy production using 3D rendering and spending less time uh, going you know, right on the points to some mood, some composition. So we use maybe three different brushes, uh, a few layers, but I really want to focus on something that is more traditional. And yeah, you can see this is my version. And this version was rejected by the visual director. Uh, so I wanted to yeah, do something really over the top. <laughs> you can see that. But uh, yeah, I like it when it's more simple, more like uh, I think it's more clear and uh, uh, also refreshing. So yeah, I've been also working with uh, some 3D elements, uh, doing a lighting pass, exploring some sci-fi theme as well. So I'm not doing only uh, fantasy historical uh, settings, but also exploring some uh, sci-fi settings on my personal time. And that's, I think it's, uh, it's pretty uh, interesting to be able to explore these. Uh, also working with the symmetry, uh, avoiding to have always like an unbalanced composition, but also try to have something very symmetrical and simple. Um, you can see here another kind of uh, exploration I'm doing on my personal time. Uh, playing with the scale, um, having mysterious shapes in the background, uh, telling the story of uh, these kind of big, huge sentinel stars, uh, protecting maybe a, a country. So yeah, that's uh, the, the kind of illustration I like also to, to create when, I'm, uh, when I have some free time. And this kind of stuff also. So when I was traveling in, uh, in Montreal during the winter, and this very long winter we have, uh, it's good to, to, be, uh, to keep you busy doing some creation. And uh, uh, I spend like, very often when it's very, very cold outside, some time um, driving and taking photos and also doing some illustration in my place. So that's basically inspired by a landscape that is uh, in the countryside near Montreal. And I've been creating all this scene based on the, this trip I did uh, in the weekend. So that's also like how, how taking something that is close to your place and bring that to your own creative process and find some storytelling elements and bring that to a different level. Uh, also, inspiration can come from discussions, you know, from talking with people. Uh, and I'm glad I have, I have two kids, two teenagers. My son is 15 now. It's a more struggle. Uh, but uh, it was also very fun. I have, my daughter is 12. And uh, she likes to draw. And she told me, oh, Dad, I would love to have drawing from you, uh, it should be like a forest of, you know, giant mushrooms. Like, oh, cool. That's so, yeah, excellent idea. So, I need this stuff. Uh, and uh, I started with a very simple sketch, and then it ended like a big matte paint, you know, <laughs> over the top, a lot of detail. But it's, it's funny because I, I, this kind of idea is coming from, actually, a discussion with, with my daughter. So, it's also really interesting and cool to see that inspiration is not only like, running into circles yourself, putting pressure on yourself. It's also by talking with people, spending good time with people, uh, reading books, watching movies, and in that case, I would never have the idea of creating a forest of mushrooms. That's coming from my daughter, you know, it's, uh, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Also, having ideas coming from reading books and creating book covers, I think it's, uh, it's uh, also a very good challenge because you get to read a brief, you, you, you read a story, and from this actual text you read, you see images coming. And I think it's a very good exercise. I, I actually am doing, uh, with my students, I was making um, uh, an actual uh, test at the end of the session uh, using, using a text from a book and using that text to create an image. And every single artist would, make, would, would come with something different. So that's also really interesting to see how the text can give you inspiration to bring to life a world, a place, using your own personal talent also, or, or 
you know, your personal reference and inspiration. Uh, but we always change with the, the composition, you know, how things could bring storytelling something, how you can make details, how you can, you can bring to life uh, a material, an object, a rock. But how to deal with composition is, is very subjective, I think. It's not uh, only purely uh, theoretical. Uh, so that's why I've been spending time also observing and uh, through my teaching, finding solutions to, to bring to life interesting compositions. Uh, so you can see here, it could be a skyline, it's a bit boring. You know, it's uh, just you know, straight lines, uh, symmetrical uh, foreground on the two sides. And how to make this work better? So just by breaking the shapes, having like maybe overhanging structures, uh, playing with contrast and scale, having like a landmark in the distance, uh, mixing also the old and the new, the organic and the structure, uh, having some very small elements to recall the scale, human scale, with a position of very massive and huge uh, elements. Uh, you can break down this in different kind of styles also as well. <coughs> you know, play with, uh, with uh, the contrast between the skyline and the, I would say like, before having the affinity into the shapes and playing with the details in the shape, having interesting composition in the, the high, uh, high level of contrast, so the sky and the skyline. And when you take these you know, ideas of composition, you bring that in, in a game, for instance. You want to fill different moments through the compositions. You can always give the player inspiration, also like a, give him like a, the desire to spend more time in the game and dis discover new things. So that's why composition is really key when you, when you build a, a world for a game. Um, you want to have these moments where you feel claustrophobia and you would add a contrast between these moments to an open moment, to a vista, you know, for instance. Uh, you can also play with different kinds of contrast. You can play with like feeling of verticality, like something that is very impressive in terms of scale, but good composition. And that will create an interesting contrast when you discover a new location in the game that is more horizontal, more open, where you can really free, feel the freedom and also see the sky. So you can really break down all these interesting, you know, contrasts in the composition to create this kind of uh, feeling of being always uh, entertaining when you, when you, when you create a, a game. So that's why in building worlds, I think it's really important to have always in mind these notions of composition and using, you know, this contrast in, 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 the, in the feeling, in the mood, in the, the way you create, you bring to life the, the, the composition. So you would see here like a crowded location, Transitioning to an empty place, a very derelict place, transitioning to a very clean lo location, uh, being a very dark moment, uh, contrasting with a very glowing you know, location. So you go through all these feelings, and that's also the way to always entertain the player and give him this desire to, sp to spend more time in the game and also discover new things. Because if you get always the same kind of mood, always the same kind of visual composition, you get bored and you don't want to spend more time exploring this kind of world. Uh, also using black and white photos is really cool as inspiration for world building because it gives you ideas about the scale, about atmospheric there. Um, also layers of composition, layers of storytelling. You can see here the new buildings in the background, and the old city in the front. So these are all photos of, of New York from the 1930s and I think it's really cool to see how you can really, really uh, uh, bring to life uh, a world using reference and photos. So I took a bit of this inspiration to my personal process, um, working just in black and white and see how it works. And that's the stuff I've been doing lately using personal custom brush and always dealing with first, you know, the composition, the first like silhouette you see, the, the contrast that is the most important contrast you get between the sky you know, the brightness and the, the, the foreground, which is more like uh, into the, the darkness. But before even adding details, adding like a scale reference, or always having this idea, this notion of composition through the high contrast. And I think it's very really cool because you can explore, if you create like some custom brush, you can already explore different shapes and also play with the different options, like this kind of upside down compositions. Uh, as I was saying before, using all these different keywords of, you know, Close composition, open composition, play you know with keywords that could give you ideas uh, to bring to life shapes and play with the hard contrast. 
So I think it's a very good exercise, but also you can take this as a base to bring to life something that is uh, pretty complex and rich. That's also an example. So I would just draw, you know, using the line tool in Photoshop, main shapes, and then adding some textures to give this feeling of scale. So when I start, I would just have basic composition, basic shapes. And as soon as I bring these little lights, you know, from a different kind of custom brush, and uh, I will, you know, also break down the silhouette, I would bring also the scale of the landscape. You, you see what I mean? So that's the same for like sci-fi or even like medieval landscape. In that case, you can see, first, I, I've been just cutting out a very simple shape for the mountain in the background, uh, the castle here, and by adding this affinity into the contrast, so the, this is the shading, you know, actually, of the shape, you can feel now the scale of France, but also the light direction. And that's very quick, and it's a very efficient way to explore different kinds of composition before getting to the details and bringing to life like a final image. So I can show you here, you can see the, the process, usually just making line. So this one would make maybe, would take maybe one hour to, to make, you know, from, uh, from the line out to the final image. So you see first ideas of, you know, just the line art, placing <coughs> the values for the sky, adding just flat layers at first. I just want to add like some layers of shapes, composition, playing with the contrast. And for sure, adding also the atmosphere to be able to read different layers of uh, composition. It's all line tool. It's pretty efficient. I don't know if you use that, but uh, when you have this option of uh, free drawing and lasso with the polygon drawing, you can use the Alt key to switch between free drawing and then polygon drawing. So that's pretty cool because you can make structures with the polygonal one, and then you can find some really organic stuff by using the Alt key uh, with the free free hand. So. Yeah, once I have already my different layers and I like the composition, I will start to shade between the, these different layers. And you can see here I have a color palette. It could be taken from like a, a photo I had, uh, something I liked, and I would, I would just extract the values I want to have in this painting. So it's basically using the line tool. Um, the brush I'm using also has no opacity. It's just a question of uh, size, scale uh, in the pressure. But I have always like uh, the full opacity on the color. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting because you can really block the shapes and work on composition mm -hmm. silhouette first. Now using some uh, custom brush for the shading, you know, to have this uh, these values on the walls of uh, the building in the background. So what I did is that I took some photos uh, during a trip and I extracted only the highlights of the buildings and using these highlights to add details on the flat you know, silhouette. So it's really helping because it gives you this sense of uh, light direction but also scale. Shading inside the shadow, so adding some uh, skylights, doing some final tuning of the overall nude color palette. So yeah, when you have uh, almost like a all the light direction you want, you can add some shadows to give like a this sense of volume and shape. And here, final tweaking of the gradient of intensity of the light you know, from the top, a brighter but also more yellow and get, getting to the red values uh, on the bottom. So, yeah, that's it. Is it clear? I have another one. So, always starting with the background, painting a dramatic sky, stormy clouds. So, I wanted to make this. Uh, New kind of composition using a, a dark background and a bright foreground, which is like something we're not getting really used to, having like the light in foreground. But I found it was a good exercise. 
So I used some photos I, I took in, in Scotland. And you can see here the grass in the sunlight. And in the background, you have this uh, massive uh, castle as a silhouette in the, 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 the shadow of the clouds. So again, using a lot of the lasso to, to break, uh, break down all the, all, the, all the silhouette you can see here. And using some custom brush, some silhouette of, uh, of the drawings I did. And then, you know, putting all these, uh, I would say, you know, what we call inside the contrast, the affinity, so the details of the lighting direction, lighting, you know, on the rocks, lighting on the buildings. That's really helping you to feel the scale of, uh, of uh, the building, the monuments, but also have the light direction. So that's uh, pretty, pretty fast, efficient. <coughs> so it, it's a good way to show you like, to, how to start from the blank page and have something interesting at the end very quickly. Um, but always, like, the goal is to have an inspiration that's pretty clear for the mood, also an idea for the composition you want to, to bring to life. So that's why I'm always taking photos, always having this huge you know, folder full of uh, pictures, image to get inspiration for the mood, the light direction, the color palette. So you can see it's pretty simple, but using all these custom brush, but also uh, trying to get right the values and the light, uh, you, can, you can already feel really like uh, the light direction and the scale of things. So you can really use that as a benchmark, as a concept for you know, making a novel in the game, for instance. Um, Sometimes I, I can really push that to the next level, like uh, really crazy into the details using some 3D renders. Uh, I have also a background in matte painting, so you know, I, I can spend two hours in this kind of image, but I could also pan, spend 20 hours on something like that. Uh, but sometimes I like to, to bring to life something very detailed because it's almost like feeling the actual scene as a real scene. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's also a challenge to, to do this kind of illustration. So in that case, I would be using uh, more 3D, um, different tools. For sure, there's the time of the rendering. There's the time of using all these different uh, programs. But the way I start the composition is always the same. It's just ideas, thumbnails, black and white composition, uh, bringing that to life with a lasso, brush tool, using you know, the textures for the lighting direction. You can see here, I can show you the process just for the beginning. So exploring different options uh, for the scene you just saw in 3D. Just trying to, to nail down some, uh, some different um, options for the landscape, for the sea sky. So that's why also I like to use this kind of brush when you don't have any opacity in it. It's just the scale of the brush. So you can really play with the thickness of things. You can really block silhouette and, and shapes, but you don't get uh, to have uh, problems with the opacity when you, when you press the, when you press the, the still on, on the tablet. So just like three different layers of uh, intensity using the atmospheric depth exploring some different options for the composition. <clears throat> so before going too far in 3D, having like to use complex software like uh, 3D Max or Maya or even like other guys, um, you already know what is the, the, the kind of composition direction you want to, to aim. So I'm never starting something from scratch in 3D. I always you know, try to have something that is really laid down with a very simple software. It could be also in Procreate. I could do like an inking of a composition. I would take this inking to Photoshop and I would work on top of that to add some different uh, layers of uh, photo elements, textures and 3D, uh, 3D elements. Also, a way of uh, creating a scene, uh, working, as I was saying, with only with shapes, only with the selection tool, um, lasso, blocking the values for the atmosphere on maybe three, four different layers, and taking that to the different level. With textures, you can see here the light direction is coming uh, using the brush and uh, 
also the, 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 the moon is set also by the sky in the background. So you see here, composition first and then taking that to the next level using the moon textures. And same for this one, I uh, just wanted to, to block uh, black and ink in a composition just in black and white, not working yet with the atmosphere and taking that to the next level as a final image in Photoshop. Uh, this one is also a good example. Uh, we had to define the city of uh, London for AC Syndicate. Um, so I wanted to show a lot of different elements like uh, the bridge, uh, the train on the bridge, uh, the big ships in the port, uh, the Thames. Uh, in the distance we wanted to see also a simple uh, church. So it was a challenge to have everything together in the same image. So that's why it's better to iterate just in black and white. It's very easy. Before you take that, you bring that to the, ne the next level as a, a final image. Because this kind of image can be used for the, for the, all the team. You can give that as a reference for the lighter, for the VFX artists, but also for the level designers, level artists. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a pretty important key shot, key image for, for the game. Uh, but the iteration can't be made on something that is so detailed. You really have to nail down first a very simple composition. Just be really bold about the contrast, about the different elements you want to have in, in the image before bringing it to, to the next level. So that's why also recently, uh, because I have less time, uh, also uh, spending a lot of time in reviews, meetings, uh, putting, up, putting out fires also because, uh, you know, as an art director, when you work on a massive uh, IP uh, like uh, AC, uh, you don't have much free time at work. You have a lot of time to, to, to spend on reviews and validations. So that's why in my little time, uh, I could still do some thumbnails and work on some tiny things when I'm really bored in meetings. So that's some meeting sketches, meeting notes. <laughs> uh, because usually when you have a meeting, like when you have a real topic for you, it could be like 15 minutes on two hours. And that's, it's, a, it's a common problem. We all have these kind of problems uh, when you attend a meeting uh, with a lot of people. Um, sometimes like the real topic you need to, 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 to spot and you need to, to deal with is, uh, is just a small part of the, the big, uh, big meeting. So that's why I have some free time to, to draw sometime in the meeting, but also in my place. And I will make a bank of sketch, and this bank of sketch could eventually become something later when I have more time, a final illustration. So that's an example I have. It's a sketch I did on a, maybe on a, on, a, on a small piece of paper or maybe on the table. And then uh, a couple of months later, I had uh, Claire call me, I think it was for Imagine FX, and I, and I did this tutorial of bringing to life this small, cat, tiny sketch to an actual illustration, uh, using also inspiration from the photos I took in uh, Scotland for the mood, the color palette, um, inspiration coming from the light also. So yeah, that's the actual final image based on this uh, tiny meeting note. But it's cool, you, you can you know, get some uh, interesting bank of inspiration coming from your, your, your personal uh, ideas. And uh, sometimes when you, you, you have the time, you can, you can draw something, you don't get inspiration. You can dig into your folders and find maybe these files of you know, drawing a small sketch you did like a couple of months before. And it's, uh, it's really, I think it's really cool to be able to bring to life a tiny sketch you did uh, a long time before. So when you, you, you're lacking some ideas, something you can just dig into these folders. Um, this sketch was done in, in Procreate and I brought to life uh, this composition in Photoshop. Uh, we wanted to do something that is very organic, this kind of mushy, uh, uh, you see houses in the background, uh, maybe a birdhouse in the distance. So it's uh, also interesting to, to do a sketch that is very stylized, almost like a comic, and taking that as an inspiration to create a very uh, credible and realistic environment. So that's what uh, I did ba based on this uh, black and white fan art. Uh, you will see I'm doing a demo at 4 p.m. Uh, showing my process using some uh, 3D software also as well to do uh, like a final uh, rendered image. So yeah, that's Procreate in Photoshop. It's a nice, I would say, nice wedding between the two techniques and bringing to life something uh, using some photos, some 3D, uh, and and you know starting on, on a simple uh, ink uh, sketch. So let's talk about procreation now. Uh, the, the first tests I did in Procreate were like mainly uh, black and white sketch. I really enjoyed making you know sketch like I'm doing on paper. Um, 
I had this feeling on the iPad it was a bit too uh, slippery, like uh, uh, on the surface, uh, but you get used to it. Uh, you get used to, to the surface, and I think it's really cool because you also have a way of editing your image, like you can edit really uh, a drawing. Um, so being able to flip the image, it's, it looks like it's, uh, it's very simple, but it can really help you to have a step back on what you're doing. And you can't do that on paper. So being able to flip the image, having also guidelines, uh, vanishing points uh, to bring to life architecture, you know, even landscape, uh, was for me like a real uh, discovery. I was really happy to, to, to use uh, this tool. So you can see here this very organic uh, composition. Good thing about Procreate is that you can also share the process and your way of doing things. So I was super happy to see all the process like from other guys and see how they work. For sure, you, you don't see here the interface, but it's cool to see the brush strokes, to see how uh, you know, I'm doing the shading, how I'm doing the, all these uh, different values. So it's very traditional. This is what I love about um, this software. It's really a very traditional feel when you paint, when you draw. So it could be like a pen on paper, it could be like an inking on paper. Uh, you can also uh, have this very like a uh, sharp uh, brush, which is what I really like when I want to block out compositions. Um, and I'm also using that as inspiration to, to, to take that to the next level, making illustrations in color. But sometimes it could just you know, stay like this, and I have a book, just a line uh, book, just black and white illustrations, and, and a few of these uh, illustrations are, are made in Procreate. <coughs> you can see you're playing with the values, um, the dark uh, elements contrasting, and the etching for different directions to give dynamic to, to the composition of the tree. Also, being, being able to bring back some white on the, on the, on the black is, is really cool because you can, when you feel you have too dark places or you, you have too much strokes, you can bring back the white, which is more difficult on paper. So yeah, I have a few of these on my Instagram as well. Um, this one also was uh, done a different kind of uh, Setup. Um, it's more like inking, uh, but using also the uh, vanishing point, uh, the guide, you know. So it's, it's pretty cool because you can really draw something and have the line, you know, really uh, connected to, to, to uh, the actual uh, guidelines. So it's really helping you to, have, to, to, to build like a very interesting, uh, very well composed composition using the perspective. So that's also like a very quick to be able to, to bring that to, to life. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. <coughs> so you can see you're just blocking the shapes. And you get like a right hand point on the vanishing point, which is like pretty useful when you have these kind of structures on man-made man -made, uh, buildings. So in that case, I used a layer just for the, the pencil, just to have like a first idea of the composition. And the really cool thing about that is that sometimes when you paint you make an illustration, you're making a 2D sky in the background. But as soon as you have this kind of orientation of all these lines, you want to actually make clouds in 3D using the actual guide to paint, to paint the clouds. <clears throat> so that's also something I, I like to, to use. Also a good way to, to practice all the, the etching technique, uh, play with different directions to have a very interesting and dynamic composition. Uh, play also with the scale of the pen all the time, so you can do like very small hatching, uh, bolder orientations for the, for the hatching. So you can really focus on what is interesting in the story, in the image, uh, play with the high contrast, and you know, use also different layers to, to darken some areas and to, to evolve with the, the hatching. So again, it's always like using, there's no cheating, there's no shortcut. This is what I like. Um, 
it's uh, unforgiving, and I think it's really cool because when you use Photoshop or like a, even like a three D software, you can spend a long time using all the history, all these all this stuff. And you, usually in Procreate, uh, I, I'm almost spending like on paper. What I like is the option to be able to flip the image, for instance, and have different layers. But I'm not using custom brush. I'm not using any uh, texture photos. I'm just painting straight like this. So it gives also this kind of traditional feel to to the image. That's also done in Procreate. So you can see the help, again, of the, the guideline, the perspective, being able to bring to life a very complex building in a very, I would say, very fast uh, way and direction. Because you get this tool to help you uh, to get the, the right line, the right direction of the, the composition. By the way, if you have any questions, that's the moment. We have a half an hour if you want to exchange ideas. Yeah. Oh, I have a couple of copies here, but it's like we have maybe 20 left. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So uh, yeah, I, I think I will be uh, tomorrow at the I think at the table uh, 520. So yeah, uh, but I, I think I will be printing a new print run on this one, and also on the world, uh, the 2016 book I did before. Uh, I'll be doing a new print run ne next year, like in 2020. <coughs> So you can see it's like really traditional. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. A mic for the questions. If you have any questions, guys, that's the moment for you. Yeah, I have a couple of questions here. For the uh, the tree um, procreate image, are you downloading a brush set or are those the basic brushes, the pencils? That's pencils? all the basic. Uh, yeah, all the oh, default. Cool. Yeah, all default brushes. So uh, usually I'm I'm using. Uh, it's very simple. I'm using um, um, sort of pencil. I'm using the the ink. Uh, also using the um, like the um, uh, airbrush to, to be able to paint some fog, you know, some of the atmosphere. So it's pretty, it's almost like three, four different brushes. Um, also, I'm using some reference as inspiration for the color palette for the moon. Uh, you can see here I'm taking a lot of photos when I'm traveling. Could be photos in Montreal, but also when I'm traveling. So I think taking your own photo reference is very important to be able to bring to life an interesting mood and color palette. Here you can see I'm building this kind of database. Uh, as a reference, and in Procreate, what you can do uh, using the iPad is that you, you can you, you can take you know from from the bottom you can actually um, take take the um, take the bar and bring photos on the side, so you can have your all your photos on the side as inspiration. Ah, Hi, I already have the mic. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I had a question about tying the foreground into the rest of the composition. Um, I've noticed that depending on the image, like usually you have like a little design element that ties the foreground where the character is traditionally yep. put stuff in, and other times you don't. Do you have a theory on that? You just feel it out, or uh, I think it's just a question of yeah, how I, I feel about uh, making the, uh, the image. Uh, so that I want to. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of images with uh, a dark foreground, for instance, and playing with the light and background. So I think it's interesting to challenge yourself and do different things and find different way of storytelling. Uh, also, making book covers is, is really interesting because you get inspiration from the text and sometimes they will tell you, okay, when you have a client, for instance, okay, I need to have this kind of foreground element, I want to have this kind of storytelling in the front and this, this stuff in the background. So, there's no rule for that, I would say. It's more a question of uh, uh, also wanting, want, wanting to be like challenged in different ways and uh, finding inspiration in different challenges, I would say. Uh, that, that's a good example of you know taking a photo when I'm on the road. I always take a photo when I'm driving. I know it's a bit dangerous, but uh, sometimes I see oh, that fucking cloud is amazing. I need to take a picture of this cloud so I don't stop. And maybe I don't stop. Sometimes I try <laughs> and oh, you know, I have this photo somewhere it's in the files. And when I have the time, I will you know bring to life this uh, scenery I have. But it's not literally the same. It's like something well, you know sci-fi like this. But the actual, the first inspiration is actually coming from this road and, you know, oh, sorry, I'm too fast. You know, this active, this field, this cloudy distance, that's, inspiration is coming from there. Uh, I won't be able to create that from scratch from the blank page. I need to have something to trigger imagination, trigger ideas, something like that. But as, as you're making it, you're building it, and it's also getting inspired as you do it. Like, the photo you take, is feeling inspiration for the illustration, but also when you take your photo, you get also inspired by your work as illustrator. You know, it's it's an exchange between the two different practices. I think it's it's pretty interesting, and also watching movies. Like I, I watched uh, 
uh, this uh, movie. Have you seen it? Neon Demon. It's in LA. Uh, I'm not sure the movie is really good, but actually they have amazing moments of lights and really like incredible. Like the photo, the visual direction is stunning. So this is done in Procreate, and it's based on a screenshot of the movie. But I don't do any color picking. I have you know the movie on the side, and I would you know try to recreate uh, the values from from the, the the inspiration I have on the side, so from the reference. But I, I'm not doing any color picking. So it's also a very good exercise for you to be able to, to bring to life values color in the shade and, and take that to the, to the next level. And it's also a good way to find a way to stylize things. And this is what I really like in Procreate, is that I, I don't need to, uh, to, to do something that is purely realistic using texture. I want to, to bring something to life that is still painterly. And I think using photos, real photos, as inspiration to create something that is and it's an illustration, and we stay illustration, it is really, really cool. Um, I also have this example I was driving in, in Sicily in vacation. When I saw this, you know, when we be with a crazy storm cloud in the background, I was like, oh, it's, I need to do something with that. So I took that as inspiration, but not actually as the color palette, but as inspiration for a new composition. And it became this. So that's all done in Procreate, but the inspiration is coming from the photo I took uh, when I was trying. Yeah, there's a question here. A couple of questions. Hi, do you have any tips for not overworking your favorite element? What yeah, <clears throat> that's, that's a very good question. Uh, like usually when I do portfolio reviews, what I see the most often is over rendering. That's all the time. Like, People showing some really cool stuff, but sometimes the composition is a bit weak and it's over rendered at the same time. It's like doing character design. You don't have an actual design of the character, but you have a very interesting rendering on the shoulder pad, on the breastplate, and amazing light and scratches, but there's no design. So I would say like the most important thing is really to work like for environment design, like I was showing you before, just block gray values, black values, and making sure. It's the composition that is important, but not the actual rendering of things. Um, the rendering is really there to, to give you a sense of scale, a uh, sense of mood, um, uh, color palette values, but it's not there to be too descriptive. I don't know if you see what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's very important to, to be able to, to stop and find the right moment when you have enough detail. Uh, that's also a photo I took when I was on vacation. What was on vacation? <laughs> no, that's always on vacation. But uh, yeah, I'm taking a lot of photos uh, when I'm traveling, and this is in, uh, in France on a, on a big viaduct. It's pretty impressive. It's on a valley. It's uh, 300 meter high, and yeah, there's this uh, truck passing by with the, the red uh, bike in the back, and I was like, oh, it's cool, nice contrast. Also, the sky was interesting, so I, I took that in Procreate. This is what you see. This is the actual Procreate illustration. So uh, it's also a very good exercise to stylize the real and bring the, the, the real to something that is more illustrative, I think. Uh, I love Procreate for, for, for this kind of stuff. Uh, that's also a good example of uh, how I'm working, you know, breaking down the different layers I have. So you can see here, I would start with the background in the sky, uh, using very simple brush, um, with something like little trainee is very cool because you can really play with the, the cyrus in the distance. And then okay, I can use the, the actual uh, the airbrush to do the fog in the distance. But I'm trying to first nail down the, the, the values of the sky before getting to the foreground. So it's helping to get the values for you know, the, the shade, for the, the shadows, and uh, for the main color palette as well. You can see here, so like the, uh, this brush, Nick Roll, I think it's the default brush, but it's called to add textures. It's very useful to, to, to add textures in the background. Yeah, you get some negative space, you get some interesting chunkiness into it. So it's pretty pretty useful to, to paint rocks or even like to do a road to have like some bumpiness in the textures. But mainly what, what we uh, will be using to block the shape to do all the composition is this round brush, 100% uh, opacity, so I don't get the transfers. They're like oh, it's like transparency uh, on, on the pressure. It's always 100% opaque. So I can really block the shape. I can really make the composition work. But 
I can play with the scale with the pressure, which is really cool because you can have some small details, you can block like very large shape. So that's the main brush I'm using, the round brush with the opacity full on. So yeah, you can spend time rendering, getting the values, and you can really bring to life something interesting while keeping it like really pencil-y and uh, stylized. This is what I really like to, to do here without using any textures, using, uh, not, not using any photos, not using any 3D. It's really about like leaving your head, you know, going like really, uh, really free of any tools, any uh, constraints. It's really simple, and I really like that because you can really bring to life things with a simple tool and spend time like really focusing on creativity and be able to, uh, to, to, to have the essential, actually. Yeah, so that's the, the final image. So you can see it's pretty basic in terms of technique. It's just the round brush, the sky with maybe some more complex uh, ashing the distance. But overall, it's using very simple uh, tools. you have any more questions? There? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple. You, you mentioned earlier that for one of your paintings, you used your own personal brushes. So how do you go about creating or like figuring out how to get a certain texture that you want? Like, um, okay, so yeah, that's more in, in, in Photoshop when I'm doing like, really high illustrations and, and I want to, to bring to life something that is very detailed. Um, I'm, I'm making some custom brush for the silhouettes of some buildings or some man made structures. And I have two kinds of silhouettes. I will have the, just the shape to, to, to work on composition, and I will have the affinity brush, what I call for the lighting. So that we just details shading on buildings, so I can use that to when I was showing that before to, to give a light direction, but also to to add details and and bring to life something that is that is too flat. So it's not flat anymore. It's getting some perspective. It's getting some some volume. So that's the two kind of shape I'm using, two two kind of uh, custom brush I'm using. But uh, yeah, the other guys are all uh, always like very simple, like uh, the round brush, uh, angled brush, and uh, it's pretty pretty simple actually. Um, what was your biggest struggle as an artist on your journey to get where you are? Uh, I had a couple. Um, I would say when, uh, when you get more responsibility, um, having less time to be actually drawing stuff, creating stuff, uh, having to spend more time dealing with people, uh, you know, political situation, meeting, and stuff like that. So like, that's, a, that's a real struggle to be able to find a balance between being creative, having time, uh, quality time with the artist, and being also able to create yourself, but also being available when you have like issues and you have to put out fires. So I would say like these kind of uh, two mindsets you need to deal with and uh, finding the balance between uh, these two. I would say that's uh, always the, the struggle and the challenge. I would say the challenge, I would say that's a better word. Thanks. Oh, question here. Um, my question involves your work on Assassin's Creed. So you mentioned that when you were working, you know, you had to design a world that doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. um, as artists, we really like it, we need to work with reference. So how did you and your team build um, like origins, for example, without having a whole lot left behind from them? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Actually, I, I think it's more interesting to be able to create something when you don't have when you have just a few reference. Rather than having like when you when you recreate Paris or London, you have so many photos, so many references. It's almost less creative because you have to use what is already like a reference for everybody. You can almost take a photo as a tourist and make a comparison with the game. Uh, when you bring to life something like Alexandria or a place in you know uh, it was 300 BC, for instance, uh, you have to work with uh, historians. Maybe some find some ideas from uh, from ancient books. So that's, you really have to dig to find information. But what is also interesting is that it's always just hypothetical. It's not hypothetical. It's just, we think it might be like that, but we don't have any confirmation it was exactly like this. So for instance, we have the, the pillars of the temple. We think it was like maybe 35 meter high, but in the game we made them like uh, 80, 100, you know, which is like making really epic scale. And it's cool because from the distance you can always get this exploration loop and see like very interesting elements in the distance. So it's, it's for the good, it's for the experience as a player, but also as, as a, a designer to find a balance between the information you have and what you want to bring as 
entertainment piece, you know, to, to the players. Um, do you like, uh, do you time yourself for each step of your process? Um, do you have like an estimate of like how much time? The, the time it takes? Uh, difficult to say. Uh, usually like, I, I, when, I, when I'm doing something in Procreate, it could be between two hours and five hours, I would say. Um, I never work two days on, on the same image. Uh, when I when I used to work on on a matte painting, I would I could work. Uh, it could take like you know two three weeks, and um, I did, that's the way I'm using. I don't know if you know how to use that in, in iPad. You know to bring an app on the side so you can have on the side some reference and work on Procreate on the other side. It's pretty useful. I didn't know how to use that, and now I'm using that all the time. So that's basically the photo I took. Inspiration coming from this photo, and you see after that I'm painting on, on the left. So it's not a literal copy of the photo. It's the inspiration is coming from the photo, but it's not literally the same. Uh, so I'm not doing any color picking because you can't even color pick. Uh, I think on, on that, I'm just wanting to to get inspiration from the values and from uh, the actual atmosphere I have in, in, in the reference. But that's pretty cool. I'd be able to to drag uh, photo on the side and scroll new reference instead of importing a photo directly in Procreate, what you can do as well. But as I don't want to cheat, it's my way of you know, finding a challenge to not doing any card picking um, and putting photos on the side. But yes, it would be like between two hours and five hours on something like this one. Yeah, there's a question here. Um, on iPad, it's for me it's pretty difficult. Uh, I think for you know because of the reflection, you know. So I know uh, some people try to go outside with an umbrella and uh, do some stuff with the iPad. It's 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 cool, but usually uh, I, I do sketch on site. I do on paper. Uh, I will take photos and then I'm working at home. So I have also this situation where I can I can use the, the Magnum Pro so uh, to to bring some reference on the site. So it's a setup I, I like as well. But actually, I could try maybe with a large umbrella. I could try to do that. <laughs> could be fun. So yes, I think that's it for the presentation. If you have any more One questions, question. more ah, more questions. Question. Yeah, sorry. Cool. About that. Go ahead. Um, how do you keep yourself motivated, and how do you keep the experience fresh for yourself after being in the industry? That's uh -huh. excellent question. So uh, I would say there's multiple way of uh, keeping the motivation and motivational inspiration. Um, I have the reputation of uh, taking vacation, and I, I'm not this kind of guy uh, who can like work like three years in a row without taking a vacation. Uh, I think vacation is really important uh, for a few reasons. First, you need to have time with your family to connect with family. Um, then you need to, you know, really let it go and sometimes just do nothing. You know, stopping like this kind of competition with yourself or being like creative and posting stuff and it, there's really like a pressure on even the social media when you see something really cool and you want to be okay I want to show something as well uh, in vacation it's it's better to do like really nothing if you can do nothing it's, it's really cool so I'm not doing nothing because I'm still taking some photos and, and I'm, I'm really lucky enough to be able to travel but when I'm traveling I'm you know drinking wine with my friends but also you find inspiration by traveling and meeting new people. And I think also getting out of your you know, comfort area, when you, when you take a car, you go somewhere else uh, to go to a place you don't know really, meet new people. The insp inspiration and also motivation can be found like anywhere. Like uh, just uh, one day you, you take your car, uh, you take a, a canoe and uh, you spend some time in the water and uh, you do just nothing, just watching like, maybe the birds, Iran's and stuff. That's, that's really important, I think. It's, uh, it's the way to get uh, uh, a better connection with yourself as well. When you're just working, working, and being always in this kind of uh, mindset of competition, um, I think you, you, you get just tired, you, you, you lose motivation. That's, that's pretty, pretty sure. So yeah, if you can, if you can afford vacation, I think is the first thing. Uh, advice. <laughs> Mine's just a small quick one, but the um, brushes that you made when you were using Photoshop to help you block out the shapes, are those available anywhere online to like, use I, or Yes, buy? I think I have that on my Gumroom, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have a couple of uh, tutorials with the brush, but tell me if you don't see the brush, maybe I can show that. Okay, I think you. I think it's there, yeah. But I, I mean, like for inspiration, also when uh, finding motivation, you know, 
taking the time to you know, really stop working and go to the museums and do some stuff with your friends is really important. And uh, I know a few people that they get to burn out because they just work all the time. So you need to stop sometimes. So thanks a lot.